All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Haley Harwell. I'm from Texas A&M University. And today I'm going to talk about did the, I mean, sorry, did the ice bucket challenge drain the philanthropic reservoir? It's evidence from a real lab experiment, a real donation lab experiment. And so just a very forewarning here, this is not a paper about the ice bucket challenge necessarily. This is about a successful campaign much like the ice bucket challenge. All right. So our research question here is when a charitable organization runs a successful campaign, where does that money come from? Do people dig deeper in their pockets and increase their charitable budget, and that's where the donations come from? Or do their do donations get reallocated from other charitable causes or other organizations? So an example of a successful campaign, I'm sure we all remember last summer, we were logging onto Facebook and seeing post after post after post of people doing the Ice Bucket Challenge. I myself would consider that a very successful campaign. In the span of between June 1st and August 13th, 2014, they raised $11.4 million compared to what they had done previously of $1.7 million. So the Ice Bucket Challenge for the ALS Foundation raised a considerable amount of money, but where did this money come from? So Catherine Eckel and I um, co-instructed a group of undergraduate students at Texas A&M, and they came to us with a question, and they were talking about how cool the Ice Bucket Challenge was, and could they replicate this in the lab, and you know, Catherine and I sat back and we tried to talk about it, and we were like, I don't really think the IRB is going to let us dump water in people's heads inside the lab. So we really wanted to get down to what the question was, and we talked about it, and we went back and forth, and ultimately found out that we wanted to figure out where this money was coming from. This huge amount of money that's been diverted into a different charity, the ALS Foundation, where did this money come from? So the Ice Bucket Challenge is definitely our motivation behind this. Um, so was this new money? Was it a reduction in giving to other charitable causes? Or was it reduction planned in future giving? So you know you plan on every Christmas going and doing something um, for some charitable organization in town, but this summer you participate in the Ice Bucket Challenge, so now you're not going to defer, you're going to forgo your normal December donation. So once again, just because we get lots of questions about this, this is not specifically a paper about the Ice Bucket Challenge, but just about the impact of a successful campaign. So you can leave now, you won't hurt my feelings. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So how can we answer this question? There's several ways we can answer this question. We could look at data, but unfortunately our data has limitations. So we'd have to know all individuals' donations to the Ice Bucket Challenge, every one of their other donations to all other charitable donations that they have throughout the years, their political contributions, and even their miscellaneous gifts to family, friends, walking into the Walgreens and that bell ringer gets your attention at Christmas time and you put your extra dollar in there. We'd have to be able to know all this. And unfortunately, that's kind of hard to do. In a field experiment, we could do this in a field experiment, but we'd still have to know all these things before. We'd have to know what they've done previously, who they contributed to, how much they normally contribute over a, over a span of time. So a lab experiment can help answer this question, and that's exactly what we do. We restrict the choice set, and we look at the impact of a campaign within this very restricted set. All right. So we're here at SPI, so I have a feeling that I really don't need to talk about this related research, but there's tons and tons of research that looks at and investigates factors that enhance giving. So things like matching versus rebate. Giving a talk in another room right now, Jonathan Muir, also from Texas A&M, is looking at a similar question on crowding out, but he's looking at um, matching with crowding out. There's also seed money, social information, there's things on attractiveness and things like that nature. There's also plenty of surveys that are, or, sorry, plenty of experiments that are looking at how um, ask, the ask actually affects future giving. Many, many famous guys have done work in that. But this current impact on where this money is actually coming from, there needs to be a great deal of information to answer this. So our study is a lab experiment that is designed to answer this particular question. Now let me tell you how we do that. So we have, we have subjects come in that we invite in through our experimental pool at Texas A&M, and they come into the lab. And they're given an endowment. We give them a $15 endowment. We also give them a $5 show-up fee. They don't know about, they know about their $5 show-up fee, but that's not within the budget that they can give. So we say, we're going to give you three charities. All these charities are state-level charities and all popular causes with, with students. So the students really typically seem to like puppies and kittens, feeding the hungry, and also the environment. So we pick three of those, different, pick three of those organizations at different state levels. And then we conduct a campaign. And the campaign is in quotes here for one of these three organizations. And let me tell you why. What our campaign is, is not quite as catchy as putting on Facebook with dumping ice water over your head, but we use a videotape of one of our undergraduate students giving basic information about the charity. So this is a very minor campaign, a very minor 
information that's being given to these students. It's just basic things from these individual websites. They use, we actually use the language from the organization's websites and kind of almost use their mission statement, if you will, saying, you know, this cause has done this, X, Y, Z. And then one of these decisions, oh, sorry, and then subjects then are going to repeat this actual decision. So they're going to make their allocation between themselves and the three charities once again. I'll show you all how in just a second. And we're only going to choose one of these decisions, either the one before the video or the one after the video for payment. So basically the questions we're asking here is, does the campaign increase giving to the targeted charity? And how is overall giving impacted? So why the lab? We kind of touched on this already. I'll just go through it one more, once more real quick. It's impossible to study in the field because we'd have to know a plethora of data on every individual and all about their giving habits for many, many years. And it's difficult to determine the extent of a campaign without a controlled experiment, so that's why we're doing this in the lab. And we cannot determine if the gifts uh, to charity are from a new budget or from a reallocated, um, reallocated funds, so that's why we're doing this experiment. All right. These are the three charities. Uh, Feeding Texas is a uh, Texas food bank network. It uh, is working with Feeding the Hungry in Texas. The next one is Texas Campaign for the Environment. It's working with the environmental causes in the state of Texas. And finally, Operation Kindness. It's the largest no-kill animal shelter in the state of Texas. Um, all right, so the decisions. As I said, they come into the lab. We give them $15. We say, how much would you like to contribute to these three charities any way you see fit and yourself? So please divide this $15 among yourself and the charities. They know a second part of the experiment is coming. They have no idea what it is. This is their decision sheet. So it basically says the exact same thing I said. Here it shows a $15 endowment. And then we ask them between these four things to divide the money up. The only requirements we have, they have to equal 15, and they have to be in whole dollar increments. That's all we restrict them to. They can do it any way they see fit. So then, after we, collect, after we get this information from them, we then run the treatment, which is actually running the video. So we use a targeted fundraising campaign for one of the three charities. So we had three sessions, one for each charity. So one set of students saw the Feeding Texas, one set of students saw Texas Campaign for the Environment, and so on and so forth. All videos are very, very similar. They're all made in the same exact location with the same student talking about the cause. They make the second decision using the standard dictator game with the charity as the recipient, $15 endowment. Everything is exactly the same. All that's happened is they've seen this information. We only, choose, we only pay for either decision one or decision two, like I said before, by the roll of a die. All right. So when it comes to time for the video, we bring up one of the undergraduates to the stage. I don't know if any of y'all know anything about Texas A&M. We're very proud, a very proud school. We have a lot of school spirit. And, when they, and the undergraduates, they have these whoops and cheers and giggums, and I'm not real, real comfortable with that. I, I don't really know what they're doing. But each year has a different cheer. And so he comes to the stage, and he says, you know, hi, my name is Mark Rockhorst. I'm in Texas Fight Nagy class of 2016, and he does this cheer. I'm going to save the embarrassment, since this is being recorded. And they're going to say, now we're going to show you this video that does a bunch of great things here in Texas. We challenge you to really think about the effects of your donation on homeless animals here in Texas. This is for Operation Kindness. Your donation truly matters. Please pay close attention to the vital information. They see this video, and at the very end, we said, thanks so much for watching, for listening. We challenge you to give now. And they make the exact same decision as before. Same exact decision sheet. Allocated the $15. This was conducted at um, Texas A&M in the Economics Research Laboratory last November. The average earnings were about $14.09 per person with the $5 show-up fee. And the, average, uh, and the average payment to the charities was about $5.91. We have 67 subjects in this. So first, is the campaign successful? So did we, were we able to run a successful, successful campaign? Here's the baseline mean contributions to the targeted charity. So whichever charity was targeted in that session, and the baseline subject sent on average $2.10 to that charity. And after seeing the video of the targeted campaign, they sent $2.70. So we see a significant increase in contributions to the targeted charity. Now, where did these increase in contributions come from? So here's another picture. This is the mean contributions to non-targeted charities. So we see in the baseline to the non-targeted charities, the other two charities that were left they sent $3.81 in the baseline and $3.19 in the treatment, also significant. We can look at this through a panel, uh, panel regression using decision one and decision two for each individual, and we find that on average 60 cents is increased to the targeted charity after they actually receive the treatment. This treatment effect holds no matter what we're, uh, what we're 
considering also it, when they last donated, how often they donated, um, the GSS altruism scale, weekly spending, age, female, things like that. We see the same effect. All right, so the campaign was successful. And the campaign successfully increased contributions to the targeted charity for all three charities. So does the total charitable giving increase after a successful campaign? I kind of spoiled this earlier. We saw it go up for the targeted charity, but we also saw it go down for the non-targeted charities. So the answer is very simple. The budgets stay almost identical. They're exactly the same. $5.89 in the baseline versus $5.87 in the treatment. So people are not dipping further in their pocket to actually pay more to the targeted charity. They're actually reallocating their, they're reallocating their donations from one charity to another. These are the distributions and amounts sent in sessions one, two, and three. For decision one, this is before the campaign on the top half of the page and on the bottom half of the page. This is the distribution of total contributions after they've seen the video, and these two distributions are almost identical. They are identical. All right. So we also run a panel regression on total contributions, and as you can see, the amount of money that they're actually spending to all three charities does not change. It's not significantly impacted by the campaign itself. So no, total giving is absolutely unchanged, and the increase in giving comes entirely at the reduction and at the cost of the other charities. All right. So after presenting this a couple of places, we got a bunch of questions. And so we decided to do a robustness check to look at um, new control treatments. And what we decided to do here was we were going to do a general giving campaign. So if you run a general giving campaign, does, will this reduce the apparent trade-offs between charities? So instead of giving now to the environmental cause and transferring it to the puppies and kittens, is this general this general video, which I'll talk about here in just a second, is it going to actually increase total giving? So can we make people dig deeper in their pockets? So our research question here was, can a general campaign increase total giving? Basically priming general charitable behavior. And the way we did this is we used the exact same design as before. Two parts, a control and a treatment. They're, just, they're taking $15 and dividing it up between themselves and three charities. The exact same charities as before. But the video they're seeing is not actually for one of the charities. It's for the big event. And I'm going to tell you all a little bit about the big event. The big event is the largest one-day one event where students do service in College Station and Bryan area around Texas A&M. Texas A&M has about 50,000 students. We have around 40,000 undergraduates. And last year, 21,000 individuals or our undergraduates participated in the big event. It is a very, very large organization. And I don't think you could go anywhere on campus and not someone know about it. It's a very, very big event. Um, they're very, very proud of it. And it's something that they really take pride in. And every year, they've already started. I just got three or four emails this week about the big event, which doesn't happen until much later in the year. So last year, 21,000 Texas A&M students participated in this event, completing over 2,100, sorry, 2,500 jobs. These jobs can range anything from helping someone clean their yard up to going and feeding the homeless to helping build fences at um, animal shelters, things like that. These, event, these, different, um, these different projects they're doing range very, very drastically in what they're asked to do. It promotes campus and community unity. And like I said, it's the largest one-day student-run service project in the world. And it was so successful that it's expanded to 110 other schools across the nation and the world. So how we do this is we bring them the same guy into the same presidential office and he films a video about the big event. So basically we're trying to prime general charitable giving on something that all people at A&M know what's going on. Everyone's familiar with the big event, so this should just prime their general, char their general charity feelings about we should give money. And then we do the same thing. We pay them for decision one or decision two. And their average earnings were $14.08, including the $5 show up payment, and $5.90 were sent to charity. We have 42 individuals that were run through this protocol. So here's what happened. This is, just to remind you, this is a, what, the picture you saw earlier. Um, the blue bars here are the control, and the red bars are after they see the video. Before we saw the total expenditure for giving did not change. And here we see the same thing. It slightly goes up, but not significantly. We see a slight increase, but not enough to be significant. So basically, even priming them about general charitable, beha charitable behavior does not cause them to dig deeper in their pockets. They still give, on average, the same amount. All right, so just to, just to show you the picture and make it a little bit more clear, we look at 
the treatments one, two, three, where we targeted general, I'm sorry, where we targeted a specific charity and compare that to treatment four where we're actually targeting the general charitable cause. And we find that the pre-giving before the campaign is not significantly different. The, pre, the giving after the campaign is not different. And also the difference, the change in, sorry, the change in contributions. So the, what they gave after the video and what they gave before the video are not significantly different from what we saw in the very first uh, three treatments that I showed you. So here's just another picture of that. These are the distributions. The top is sessions one, two, and three in total amount sent. And the bottom is, is this new general charitable um, prime. And we see that the, the, the distributions are absolutely not different. All right. So what we find through these four different treatments is we find that total, the total philanthropic reservoir, the charity budget, if you want to call that, how much money people are actually spending on charities is unchanged. And it doesn't matter whether you're targeting that, pri targeting that charity, the, the amount they're sending remain the same before and after the campaigns. And we consider these successful campaigns because all the contributions to the targeted charity actually went up. So the campaign increased giving to the targeted charity, but it increased it at the expense of the non-targeted charities. So basically what we find here is that these charities are substitutes for each other, even when the causes are unrelated. So even if you're talking puppies and kittens all the way to the environment, they're actually using these different charities as substitutes for one another. So we imagine this effect would be likely to be much stronger if you were using all puppy and kitten charities instead of different environmental and feeding the hungry. And the robustness check that we ran here, just a general chari charitable prime, basically shows that a general charitable campaign does not increase giving, and there's no, chan no change in the donation budget. So that's what we find. Are there any questions? Sure. Thank you. Yes, sir. OK. No? Okay. So you've, you've used the, the ice bucket thing as successful based on one variable? No, so. The amount of money they raised plus one versus the other? So we, the, the ice bucket challenge was absolutely our motivation because the students were interested in it. And yes, they did significantly increase their donations from the year previous. So that's what we're considering a success, successful campaign. Not only did they raise money, but they also increased um, people's, they made people more aware of ALS, right? So I think that was also one of their huge benefits to the Ice Bucket Challenge, was making ALS more prominent in people understanding what this disease was. So I think the successful campaign is actually measured in both ways. We're only looking at the financial means of the successful part of the campaign, because in the lab, it's very difficult to control the other part of the. And as a development officer, we wouldn't have viewed this campaign as successful. You wouldn't view it as that successful. OK. Because we think there were some negative ramifications in the way they Right. So a special event is only used for us as a capture tool to get the increase of donors, right? And then the development officer cultivates them up to that estate or That's a good point. So I just I would just keep that in mind. No, I appreciate that. As you're presenting and making state if you're in front of a whole group of development officers, right. And say it's successful. A huge reaction. I would I would Right. And they tried to do it this year and they weren't near successful. I mean, right. right. There's a lot of issues there. I would say is that you, you said that we had a fifteen dollar endowment. We did. Yes, yeah, so in experimental economics, an endowment is giving them money to reallocate how they wish. That, that's probably very intelligent. Yes, I probably should work on my language there. Perfect, thank you. Yes, sir. You don't have to pay it immediately, right? And, and so it's almost disruptive in a way for charitable giving and normal charitable giving. And so you may, in the middle of the month, get disrupted and then and get motivated to give online. And then at the end of the month, still have those five or six uh, things to give. The check and balance, which is the same check and balance. 
as before. That's true. Right, subset. It's a good idea. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. If you look at um, some of the things that we talked about earlier, John was talking about that general theory of inequality is flat at 2% of GDP or 2% of income. Right. Based on that in of itself, wouldn't you assume that you're not actually, in, in, no cause is actually increasing additional charitable giving? It's a continued. Right, I, I think that's exactly his point this morning was showing that, you know, that's absolutely flat. It's just relative to the income, the income increased. Right. You know, um, I, th I think that this kind of confirms it too. When you have individuals in a lab and you're running a successful campaign, they're still, they're, they're basically taking from the charities they already allocated to and reallocating that to what the targeted cause is. And I think that we're just using this as a very, just basic, very simple, simple experiment just to show that even in the lab, in this situation where we're controlling everything, we still see people just shifting this money from one cause to another. And, you know, this could mean a lot for, like, you know, the ALS and the Ice Bucket Challenge. So we, all this money was raised. What it actually happened? Where did that money come from? And that's really difficult to tell because we'd have to have all charitable organizations and have all their data and every, you know, cash donation that everybody makes.